I don't think it's actually been responding to trade action, but I think that something we have to think about is that we've been talking about this for months at this point, right? So there's largely been uh, the baking in and a lot of these expectations for a lot of asset classes, especially when it comes to emerging markets, emerging market equities and currencies. So any sort of incremental positive on the trade front is already enough to cause a little bit of a relief rally. So yesterday specifically, I think it was a response to the fact that the actual tariff number wasn't, the percentage wasn't as large as expected. And I also think it was keying off some of the measures that China has been implementing to soften some of the blow to their economy. The, the financial presses, you know, I watch it every day and it, it went from, um, you know, the market sold off based on increasing trade tension with mm. China. And then when there'd be, you know, a, an overture from Mnuchin about another delegation, they would say it's up because it looks like trade tensions were easing. Mm -hmm. Yesterday, it was the markets were looking past <laughs> trade tensions with, um, with China. So, you know, they don't know how to characterize it. I don't it, know but necessarily it's looking past it, but well, I think it's yesterday everyone they ignored had already it. So, expected so you think, it. So you think there was better it. news in it? being 10 percent than 25 percent. An incremental positive, correct. Okay. Um, so it hasn't affected it yet, Victoria. Is it, I mean, is this the calm before the storm? If it gets really bad, should you at least be lightening up? Or, or does the market strength show that it's going to continue to move higher and shrug this off? Well, for now, I mean, as Gabriella was mentioning, the markets did shrug it off yesterday and a little bit of a positive surprise with that 10 percent. But we do have to look a little bit longer term. I mean, right now we're about 0.2 percent um, effect on our GDP. If the 10 percent goes up to 25 percent at the beginning of the year, if we don't get, um, you know, a solution from these trade talks possibly that are coming up, then that goes up to about 0.35 percent of GDP. But if you look at the whole 267 billion that's coming um, that has the tariffs on it for China, that's about 1.3 percent of China's total GDP. GDP. And they're saying their hit's going to be about seven tenths of a percent. So it's still going to be a larger hit to China. They do have domestic issues going on. So there can be some growing uncertainty as it relates to this. However, we have a lot of tailwinds in the market. You know, we've got tax reform. You've got my fellow Texan Kevin Brady coming on in a little bit with a possible tax 2.0. We've got low inflation. We have strong earnings. We're looking at possibly another 20 percent um, growth and earnings this quarter. So there's tailwinds in this economy that are keeping us fully invested and using maybe like the fixed income allocation to have a little bit more of a conservative approach with a short duration, high income component to buffer any volatility that we see coming. And hey, Gabriella, do we need to be an expert in, um, in, in trying to read uh, hesitate, I can't say the tea leaves, but I mean, do we need to know everything about China to understand how both sides eventually save face? It, it, because they do have a certain economic model that we think is unfair, but that they probably think, they're, I mean, they're going to be hesitant to abandon that. Mm -hmm. Business as usual for that. Right. Like, but do we, do we need to be, as a market strategist, do you have to like study up on, uh, you know, on thousands of years <laughs> of, uh, to, to understand? I how do this... think we need to understand where they're coming from. And I think there was a perception that this would be um, an easy negotiation in the sense that we have a little bit more leverage with them than they have with us. But I think and we have a team that's based in Asia, which is very helpful. And they tell us. Well, how, how do we save face? What do they say? How, how do both sides save face in this? They say to us that really China views this as an existential battle, um, as a reminder to them of when they've lost face in the past, right? And now they see it's their moment in the sun, and they're very reluctant to abandon their model and their place in the global stage. So it is very difficult for them to be seen as succumbing right. uh, to any sort of demands from the U.S. And that's why I think investors have largely accepted that this is not going to be easily resolved, that this is actually going to stay with us for the foreseeable The markets future. keep going up. Do you, do you, um, do you, have, do you have China experts at, at your firm now, Victoria, to, to, to try to tell you exactly how how this would work and, and, and who accepts what. I guess you got to have a Trump expert too to decide what he finally yeah. accepts as. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, you'd have to have experts all the way around, wouldn't you? But yeah. um, when it relates to China, I think the other thing we have to remember is they're having domestic issues as well. You know, a lot of the um, issues that they put in place, some of the programs with 
trying to get the leverage down, the shadow banking issues, that's really affected some of their private companies. Their credit growth is actually slower on the private side, and that's causing some concerns for them. They're really doing um, okay on the state-supported side, but as a whole, China is having some domestic issues. So that plays in as well to how much they're willing to give in order to save face and make themselves look as strong as they can, because the U.S., the administration, really feels like they're coming from a source of strength with this, and they're not going to back down. That's why it's but, but, but also, I know we're trying to save Chinese face here and everything, Thanks. but the administration, when it comes to China on trade, does have a point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah. administration after administration has been saving face with the Chinese, and it's to led to this massive but, but, trade imbalance and all this intellectual property. So mm -hmm. the, the idea that after doing this for decades, it can be resolved amicably and easily is just it's naive. Crazy. Right. And that, it's but that's be when, when you hear from ugly. Jack Ma who is an expert yeah. on how the Chinese perceive this, when you hear from him that it's going to be five years, maybe 20 years of disruption, that's when you start to think, okay, maybe we need to recalibrate yeah. our expectations. Yes. Yeah. And that's where I think it's important to think about what's actually been priced in, which we would say is quite a lot.